planets are dynamic. They're constantly changing. You can't just look at it once and say, oh, okay, I got it. I understand what's happening. Well, our next speaker I'm gonna turn it over to is Adam Chantry. Those of you who are with us at the um, uh, last meeting of our uh, year, academic year at the Franklin Institute. Oh, well, I got um, really Adam, Adam is a, you look fine though, Denise. Okay. Uh, uh, Adam is a, a solar system uh, JPL uh, ambassador. Um, he's also a, a student of mine and works in the planetarium that I uh, started working in uh, at the Stackton School District. So Adam, uh, I think you're out there. And yes, I can see that you're unmuted and uh, take it away. Awesome. I'll uh, share my screen up here. Let me get that going. All right. So uh, thanks for having me back again. I always love uh, the, the written house. I, I love this format. Uh, just last week, we did this with the Delaware Valley Amateur Astronomers. So it was, a, it was a really good time, a really, really fun time to see all this going on. So I'm going to be talking about, if you haven't heard in the news lately, there is a comet in the sky. And it was discovered back in December. And it was supposed to be the brightest comet of, you know, the, the decade, possibly of the century. There was all kinds of things going on. So I figured I'd look into um, this uh, comet C2019Y4 Atlas Pop or Fizzle. And as I looked into it, um, turns out it's a fizzle. So thank you. Good night. That's <laughs> <it>. uh, <laughs> There's not too much to it. Uh, so I changed my talk just a, a little bit. I am going to talk a little bit about where to find it and things like that. But I thought I'd focus a little bit more on just comets in general. So here's a, here's a, a very doctored up picture of a comet. But for most of history, comets were very feared because in astronomy, um, you know, pretty early on, we were able to figure out the basic motions of the moon, the planets. They didn't have this mystic sense once we were able to kind of figure them out and predict where they were going to be. They seemed a little less threatening to us, but um, comets were always very threatening because they were very unpredictable. They would just they would just show up. And throughout history, they were linked with different things. Um, the assassination of Julius Caesar, the Ides of March, um, that was heralded after a comet. Um, and the, that sign of the comet was actually used to um, turn the Caesar into an actual god instead of just a, a person ruling. And that, that's a, a whole, whole interesting uh, history there. Um, Halley's Comet heralded in uh, the Black Plague in Europe. And um, also uh, Pizarro's uh, conquering of the Incas, that was uh, heralded in by a comet too. And there's, there's tons of histories. It, there's really interesting history on all of these things, all of these things that coincidentally occur with observations of comets, that people attributed to comets. Um, now, once we can understand things um, and they can become predictable, they become a little less scary. So here we have uh, Edmund Halley of the famous Halley's Comet. So Edmund Halley, what, what he did um, in 17, uh, 1705, he used Newton's new laws that were just, he had, he and Newton went back and forth. And in 1687, Newton put out a book of all of this math. And he used that math to predict the return of the 1682 comet. He said it's going to come back in 1758. Now, uh, 16 years after his death in 1758, that comet did return. And it kind of got rid of the mysticism. It was something now that we could predict and start to, to apply some science to. So um, that mysticism started to fade a little bit. And it, you know, we, we often expect, uh, once science helps us to understand why things happen, um, we know that society will never overreact to those things again, right? Uh, people never re overreact to things that we understand scientifically. Well, two appearances later in 1910, Halley's Comet, um, coming of the end of the world. These were the headlines in the computer, uh, or in the uh, internet of the time, the papers, fear of comet apparent in city. Uh, so some quack scientist had taken an actual scientific discovery. They had used spectroscopy to find uh, a gas cyanogen in the tail of Halley's Comet. And they said, oh my God, when the Earth goes through this tail of Halley's Comet, it's going to wipe out all of the life on Earth. And People really, they were selling anti, uh, 
Comet pills and things. I'm not really sure how their toilet paper supply did um, in 1910. I couldn't, I couldn't find any of the research. Uh-oh. a uh, rabbit hole of why the comet is named this way and looking into you know what's in the name of a comet so the official body that names comets is the international astronomers unit the uh, iau and it's it's done by a group of about 10 astronomers um, it's the work group on small body nomenclature and they've come up with this so what you're looking at here this c stands for a single apparition comet um, you could have a P comet, so that Halley's Comet 1P is one that appears multiple times or has a less than 30 year uh, appearance, or D can be extremely short period. Uh, 2019 is obviously the year of discovery, so um, that's 2019. This Y is a month code. So each month has two letters. So January, the first half of January is A, second half of January is B. First half of February is C, then D, E, F. They skip I because it looks too much like a one. So this is the second half of December, Y. And then the number right next to that is the number of discovery in that part of month. So this was the fourth comet discovered in the second half of December in 2019. So there's a Y1, a Y2, and a Y3. And then the atlas is either the name, it can be either the name of the discoverer, like the Shoemaker-Levy ones, things like that, or the program that discovered it. So this one was discovered by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. Um, this is two telescopes out in Hawaii that are actually looking for asteroids or things that might impact the Earth. So let's do a quick look at the difference between a comet and an asteroid. So one of these is a comet, one of these is an asteroid. Can you tell the difference just by looking at them up close? Go ahead, hedge your bets on, on, on which one it's going to be. Uh, I'll put the names up here, so that might help you. You can look at the, uh, the way that the names go, see which one's the comet and the asteroid. So here on the left is a comet, and the right is an asteroid. So on the, on the left here is from the Rosetta mission. Um, so this is uh, uh, one of the comets that we've actually landed on. That's why we have such a high resolution here. Um, and this is asteroid Iwatawa uh, over here that JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, actually returned a sample from and things like that. So up close, they look very, very similar. Um, their differences, and this is all very generalized. There's, there's a lot of gray area in between comets and asteroids, what makes one. But in general, their composition, comets are mostly ice or what we call volatiles. They can be things here on Earth that would be gases, but out deep down in space, they're, they're ice, they're solid. Um, they tend to be far from the sun and they tend to have very highly elliptical or oval orbits, whereas asteroids are more rocky and metal. They tend to be closer to the sun relative to, to um, these comets and they have more circular uh, paths. So those are just some of the differences kind of looking between these two here. Um, th this is kind of the regions they come from. You can see the comets on the left. They come from this region, the Kuiper Belt, where um, Pluto resides and out a little bit further, the Kuiper Belt objects. And this giant sphere of debris around the entire solar system that we refer to as the Oort Cloud. Actually, comets are kind of our evidence that the Oort Cloud is out there, because we always see these, these things in these highly elliptical orbits kind of diving in from all directions. So we can kind of assume that. And you can see uh, asteroids are mostly in the asteroid belt, Jupiter's orbits, things like that. You can, you can see kind of where, where they reside. All right, so this comet was set to be a very bright comet. Possibly, you know, I saw all kinds of news reports, maybe as bright as the full moon. We know how the media tends to uh, overexpand on, on astronomical things. But just last week, they noticed the breakup of the coma or of the nucleus of the comet. So comets basically have four parts. You have the nucleus, which is that solid part in the middle. The coma is kind of the glowing cloud around it. As it gets close to the sun, those vile tiles, those ices and things start to sublimate when things go right from a solid to a gas. 
and they form kind of this haze around it. And then they'll usually have two tails. One tail is ionized gas, and it interacts with the magnetic fields of the sun, the solar wind, and points directly away from the sun. Then there's a dust tail of the debris that just kind of falls away. It, it trails a little bit differently. Here's a, a highly you know, filtered picture of a comet, and you can distinctly see the two different tails in it um, as we look at that. Now, how we know that this comet was breaking apart, people started to notice that the, the comet's uh, nucleus, the, the tight part of it, was starting to widen out, thinking that there was more um, things in there. This is something I wasn't able to substantiate it. I just found it an hour ago. But this is supposedly an image from the Hubble Space Telescope looking at near infrared. And you can distinctly see that that nucleus, that hard rock, is broken apart into four different pieces. So the comet's probably going to fall apart. We can also look at the light curve. Um, so in the beginning, this light curve, as we're going across time across the bottom, it was getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And it was predicted to go up, follow that gray line, and get very, very bright in the sky. Since it's broken apart, that red line is now the predictions based on, on what we've seen so far go through. Um, and you can see that light curve starting to go down. So we're probably, it's not going to be a very bright object um, in the sky. Now, if you wanted to look for this comet, it's, it's back to about magnitude 9, which is very, very dim. I spent three nights looking for it. I couldn't find it. Um, but if you wanted to look at it, this is the region of the sky that it's in. So on the left-hand side here, this is the constellation of Auriga. And I like this picture because it gives a hand as kind of a, if you hold your hand all the way out, that's a good way to measure the sky. So from your thumb to your pinky, is about 25 degrees of the sky. So you can kind of use that to, to gauge where this would be on April 21st. So if you look at that triangle on the top of Auriga, you can see it's kind of off to that. If you go from Capella, that really bright star, it's about a hand span width. On the right hand side, this is a look at it. So off of Auriga, below the Big Dipper, it's really in a dark part of the sky. So it's not easy to kind of jump from star to star to because there aren't any bright stars around it. It's, it's really in kind of a dark, especially with light pollution, it's just a really dark part of the sky. But you can start off looking here on a sky map, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. So this is that Capella, and the comet's about a hand's width away from it in that, in that region. You can start to look for it. And if you really zoom in, in um, Um, I'll never look for another comet again. I'm completely soured to it. But just today in the news, uh, C2020 F8 Swan. Look, there's a new comet. Let's go find it. So there is a new comet that's supposed to be really, really bright again. It was just discovered. So you can see by the name C2020. It was discovered in 2020. F is the second half of March. Um, it was the eighth one. And it was discovered by the Swan mission. Um, that's a uh, solar observatory. So this is going to be coming up in the sky. This one we won't be able to see until late May, and it'll have to be just before sunrise. It'll be in the constellation of Perseus. So there is another comet that could get very bright again, or it could break apart like this one did, and you know we've wasted a whole bunch of time. But it, it is really fun to go out and kind of look for these things and see what you can find um, and try to find it out there. So that's uh, looking for Comet Atlas there in the sky. Uh, let me turn off my screen share here so we can get back to this. Oh, where'd my screen share go? Wow. I could applaud for it. 